Outer Banks and welcome to a new episode of OBX ETV where we give you the inside scoop on what's happening in the local and regional entertainment world. I'm Sue Arts. First up, we can tell you about the top stories trending right now at obxentertainment.com. The Brew Through Summer Concert Series continues with Live and Cracker on July 10th and Jim Blossoms with the Spin Doctors on July 17th at Roanoke Island Festival Park. Another national nod to the Outer Banks as USA Today named the historic Waterside Theater on Roanoke Island as one of the 10 best outdoor concert venues you shouldn't miss. You can get full details on each of these stories, plus our photo gallery and video highlights from the recent Bruce Hornsby concert right now at obxentertainment.com. Long before there was a French Fry Alley, a Walmart, or a food line anywhere within miles of the Outer Banks, there was Captain Frank's in Kitty Hawk. Celebrating their 40th anniversary this year, Captain Frank's is undeniably an Outer Banks icon, a locally owned and operated success story, and a super tasty place to eat lunch. Today, we're very happy to have with us our special guests, Harvey Hess Jr. and Harvey Hess III. Thank you. Hey guys, thanks for being here. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Appreciate it. Nice. So, 40 years, that's a long time. You're actually the longest running business that we've had on the show, so uh, <laughs> what brought you here in the first place and what made you go into the restaurant business? Well, 40 years is a long time. I, you know, I, when we started I actually had hair. Um, uh, but uh, how we got down here was probably the second picture that was taken of me after I was born in the hospital was my mother holding me and my dad holding a string of bluefish. <laughs> uh, in Nags Head at one of the old cottages down there uh, and I was born in September and that was in late like November or whenever down there but over the years uh, grew up in Norfolk Virginia and uh, over the years obviously we always traveled down here well not obviously but we did travel down here and spend some vacation time down here um, and later on when I was a teenager we were surfing down here uh, back in the early days of surfing um, when I still could surf, uh, <laughs> now I stand up out of work. But um, my dad uh, actually uh, got together with this guy, and dad loved to fish. My dad was a great fisherman, and he thought, well, you know, I want a place down there, and this piece of property came up. And so uh, he actually, uh, and the guy, that they discussed it and to have a little fun with it, they put three prices uh, in a in a jar and then they cut cards for it and my dad got the best price of it and went ahead and, and purchased it that was uh, in about 1969 1970 um, and I have three younger brothers um, and my dad was kind of looking for something to keep three young teenage guys out of mischief in the summertime mm -hmm. And he always loved to cook. He liked a lot of things like that. And, and so he just thought, hey, you know, a little fast food place would be interesting. So over the period of two years, uh, we actually physically built, my dad was in construction, um, and we actually physically built Captain Franks. We poured, the, we poured the slab, we laid the block, we did the framing um, on weekends. Um, and uh, with patchwork, uh, you know, equipment and, and all that sort of stuff. And it was no, uh, there was no time frame. It was just kind of a labor of love. And uh, eventually, uh, the summer of 75, we opened uh, in June of 1975. And my brothers and I ran it that first summer. And uh, that's how we got started. Awesome. That's great. So uh, I'm sure you've seen like a lot of other restaurants come and go over the past 40 years. Um, what else has changed in the last four decades on the Outer Banks? Well, literally everything you can think about except right. the ocean has, or the sound has changed in the last 40 years down here. Some, some we think for good and, you know, it's a two-edged sword. It's always a mm -hmm. two-edged sword. Um, but uh, 
Captain Franks has uh, just been a, a joy uh, most of the time and a pain in the butt other times mm -hmm. um, to run. And, but it's continued to evolve and we've never, we never forget uh, our philosophy. And the philosophy is if we serve really good food and we treat people the way we want to be treated and we charge a fair price, mm -hmm. um, people will come back and they'll tell other people. And today, we just, that's still our mantra. If you go in the back room at my place, it's uh, little signs around that say, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Mm -hmm. um, we're only as good as the last satisfied customer that walks out the door. And we strive every day. Harvey uh, picked, up the, picked up the mantle. Uh, we strive every day to make Captain Frank's an experience that when people go back in the dead of winter to Michigan or New York or Ohio and they think about their summer that a, you know a, a smile comes on their face when they when they when they think about it because you know what can be more fun the beach and hot dogs and you know great fries and you know so the changes have been uh, you know numerous I mean when we first came it was like that oh <laughs> hey, look, that's what it looked like wow. uh, um, when we first came down. Actually, this is six years after we opened. And there was virtually nothing for two and a half miles in either direction but us. There were no houses except on the ocean front. There were no houses to the sound. It was all sand dunes. Wow, that's crazy. And that little beacon of light at night uh, was Captain Frank's. You could see it over top of a dune. You couldn't see it mm -hmm. because it was only a two-lane road. And we were set back from the road between sand dunes, mm -hmm. but um, it was uh, it was something. We actually people were going, "What are you doing building a hot dog place in Kitty Hawk? Nobody will ever go to Kitty Hawk, you know that's too far north." And uh, so anyway, it, it it apparently wasn't as long as we were willing to stay at it. Now Harvey, <clears throat> my son, grew up here the whole time, and it, I'd like him. You can talk about a couple of changes you've seen. I mean, it's changed. It's changed quite a bit, mm -hmm. like Dad said, for good and for bad. Um, you know, you don't want to, obviously, I think the, some stuff on the Outer Banks that's changed for good is the people that have built nice looking things. Mm -hmm. Then you got the stuff that gets built that's just the square box, and it just, it's not eye right. It's not why you come here. I mean, people want to see the old Nags Head style, cedar shakes. That's what they want to see when they come to the Outer Banks, and that's why, you know, as you see this picture now, that you, as you ride by today, you see the deck and the cedar shakes, and it, you've taken an old building and make it almost look older, but it's, it, you know, it's newer at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to just kind of, it, it's a fun place for people to hang out. But yeah. We noticed uh, this past year, didn't you add like a roof deck or something? We, we did. We added that deck. We opened that uh, Memorial Day a year ago. <clears throat> so we got that open, which allows us, you know, quite a bit of other people to hang out mm -hmm. up there. We can do some music up there, serve up there. So it's, it's been fun. You know, it's just a better, another place for people to hang out and bring their kids and a playground out back. So it's kind of just... It's kind of one of those places you almost feel like you're going to somebody's house right. sometimes. And I think a lot of my friends, if you ask them, they kind of feel like that. Their kids can come in and run around. And they can sit back and have a beer on the playground mm -hmm. and watch the kids. And everybody can kind of have fun. And that's that's what that's what I want it to be. I don't want ever anybody walk in there and go, guys, this place is stuffy or you know anything mm -hmm. like that. Just It's a hot dog place. And if somebody can't have fun in there, right. then they can't have fun anywhere. So. Yeah. Well, I know uh, we first discovered you probably several year, years back and I just you know in the 10 minutes it only takes to make the fresh food which mm -hmm. is awesome because mm -hmm. you guys are so quick and it is nice and fresh and um but there's just f family photos and stuff all over the walls right. and so did you just um like just start that like when you were young and then just keep adding to it as time went on or? It, it really took on a life of its own we have hundreds and hundreds of pictures from all over the world um, with people taking pictures with Captain Frank's t-shirts nice. on. Everywhere from literally, there's one on a, on, a, on a Sherpa guy going up Mount Everest, you know, we have that. We have them underwater with 20 foot great white sharks wearing the, uh, uh, you know, wearing the t-shirt. We have them from Kathmandu, we've got them from um, with soldiers in Iraq and Afghanistan wow. and you know and, and it's just so cool to do that and um, you know one of the great pleasures over the years is you've you 
you never know who's going to walk through the door, right. you know. And uh, uh, over the years, you know, we've had um, a lot of people you don't recognize. There are a lot of famous people that mm -hmm. when they put a hat and t-shirt and, and, and sunglasses on, you don't know who they are. But some people you can't hide. I mean, you, it doesn't matter how you dress, you can't hide if you're Johnny Cash. Mm -hmm. you know, some Johnny Cash awesome. is eating and Jim Carter ate hot dogs in the, in the restaurant. Um, uh, Andy Griffith uh, in the old days would come in. Once it started getting crowded, he stopped coming in uh, because it was, he just was. But um, you guys probably know who David Grohl is. David Grohl from the Foo Fighters and Nirvana, uh, you know, uh, John McEnroe. And you could go on and on and on. There's just lots of, lots of people, a lot of professional athletes and stuff. But we always tell people that it doesn't matter. Hot dogs are very egalitarian, and great hot dogs, everybody loves a great hot dog, almost everybody at any rate, and your money is just as good as theirs, and we have people that are worth millions and millions of dollars that are very rich people that come in here and stand in line just like everybody else. We don't, you know, it's it's not like, oh, there's somebody over there, we'll serve them and you're, you know, mm -hmm. go around you in line. They're, your money's just as good as theirs. That's that awesome. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, we want we want that experience uh, to be one. And we, we're, we continue to strive for a better product. Everything we've ever done in Captain Franks has been to try to upgrade the product, upgrade our atmosphere, making sure that we retain the character. That, and that's, a, that's something that we have to be uh, very, very conscious of. We've got people that have been coming for, you know, mm -hmm. 35 years, and they don't want it to change. It's the reason that we have a gravel parking lot out there. You know, right. we're the only thing, I think we're the only one north of Hatteras Island Probably. just about right. that has one, and we're, that's because we were grandfathered in. Now you have to yeah. have other kinds of things. But we were there before Kitty Hawk was a town. Um, it was it was just, we were unincorporated Derrick County. Kitty Hawk was a village within Derrick County, but it wasn't a town. Um, and I actually was on the first elected city council in the town of Kitty Hawk. Uh, and four years of that was enough, um, you know, uh, it, but we really strive to make people's experience one that they, when they come back in and they, consistency, you know, mm -hmm. when you come in, you're going to get the same dog, you're going to get the same amount, you're going to get the yeah. same, thing. and that's what people like, you don't want to go back there one day and go, well, you know, this is, only half the stuff that I got on it last time, you know, or whatever, you know. So we we really strive to, to keep that consistency. And Harvey's done a, a great job of um, of molding that and, and tweaking it and, and and everything. And I, you know, I, I there's absolutely, you know, I, I couldn't do it without him. I mean, you know, it, it takes it takes all we all can do when it's busy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know that and. If, if I'm not there, um, you know, he's there, and, and when I'm not there, you know, when, when, I, when I'm there, he can feel comfortable that, that. and we've got some, just, just want to throw this in, we have some great people that have worked for us over the years, and worked for us for a long time, and I'd just like to say that they know, and we tell them, you know, that they are the face of Captain Franks when Harvey's in the back room, or I'm doing something else, or whatever, and we just we just really have some great people that have worked for us for a long time, and uh, and our our girls in the restaurant, um, we we really rely on them. I mean, they're they're very important to us, and they they know what our philosophy is, mm -hmm. and that's you know something that we go over. Yeah, well, I think that's why. I mean, you've been training since birth, so yeah, and that's obviously why you've made it forty years. <laughs> yeah, so. I, yeah. I mean, I I know what it's like to be the little kid on the floor working in there all the way up to where I am right now. So. You know, I kind of get it. Like when I'm working in there, you know, I feel like everybody should know how to know how to do every mm -hmm. job because I did them all. Mm -hmm. and I've done them, and I've done them with him watching me, and you know, being a little kid the whole time. So, and now that I've grown up and become, you know, more in management and one of the, you know, part ownership and stuff like that, that I, I kind of have a, a good feel for everybody. So I try to like, you know, I, you know, I try to be the one that kind of 
calms everybody down in there because some people that work there get real hyper. I'm sure. So, <laughs> so maybe him. <laughs> but and uh, so I can kind of I can kind of always relate to everybody because I you know I'm a little less intimidating sometimes right. when it's like so. Oh, no, you guys are good. But uh, but no, it, but it's been a great business. I've had a, it's been a pleasure for me to work in there most of the time. You know, <laughs> but but I look at it like this: when you have my when I have my most stressful day at work, you got to look at it like this. I get to live at the beach, mm -hmm. and I cook hot dogs for a living, and I make a good living doing it. So, I mean, there you go. And then there's people that look at my job, and they get to spend one week out of the year on the Outer Banks when they're snowed in in Connecticut, and they can't do anything, and they're sitting there, they're booking one week a year to come to where I live and where I work. So that puts it all in perspective yes. sometimes. And uh, that's, that's always a good feeling. And that's why when you look at that person standing in line and you're getting real busy and crazy, you see that person watching and they're smiling because this is what they, they've they wanted to see all year, then, you know, you've made someone's vacation. I mean, so. And, yeah. and, and like I said before, what we really try to, to we, we serve hot dogs, but what we really serve are people. And we, we sell hot dogs and french fries. But what we really sell is fun. Mm -hmm. And so if we remember that, and we want our kids that work there to have fun, because the more fun they have, it, it rubs off. The customers see, they're smiling, they're this. And a man come in the other day, and I was just he was kind of hairy with his kids and everything, you know. And, and you see this all the time. And I said, you know, and I walk around the restaurant talking to people, and. Uh, and I said, how's, how's everything? Is food good? And he said, food's very good. He says, but I'd come back even if it wasn't. He said, your people are the nicest people in here, he said, that I've encountered uh, since we've been down here. He said, as a matter of fact, you're the nicest people since we left. And he was from Michigan. Since we left Michigan to come down here all the way back. And he said, you're, it's just a pleasure in here. And that that's what really makes me feel good, mm -hmm. is to know that people enjoy our place. Yeah. 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 You must be thrilled because you, like, honestly are passionate about the family business because we do know other people, and I, I know uh, another family's sort of in the same situation, but the son doesn't, he doesn't really want it, you know, and, and you can tell. Yeah. You can definitely tell. And well, thank you. Well, I mean, I appreciate that. And, um, you know, I, I, you know, I've, there's other jobs that I've done and stuff like that, too, and come back and kind of forth, but I've always worked there in the summers, and about, I guess, about... 2004, about 10 years ago, I started kind of coming in more doing the day-to-day -day operations, mm -hmm. the scheduling and the ordering and all that stuff, and I've enjoyed it. it. Like I said, it allows me not only have to have a great time at work, but it allows me to have a great time outside of work because, you know, I've met a lot of people and I get, it, like I said, you get to make a good living doing something you like to do, mm -hmm. and you can't, you can't find that in a lot of places. That's know? true. And I and I enjoy it, and it's in, and I, you know I appreciate the chance and the situation because I'm in a fortunate situation. A lot of people are not. A lot of people don't get to have a family that establishes a good business and to be able to get into that. And you know I appreciate that, and that's kind of why I kind of kind of get into it too. Is that you know I want I want people to have a good time there, and I want them to you know enjoy it. And, yeah, it's yeah. been good. It's been cool. I like to be able to. You know, go to work in shorts and, mm -hmm. you know, and, yeah. you know, flip flops some days, you know, stuff like that. I think that's part of the beach. I think if you, you know, if you get away from who you are, I mean, if you start wearing, if you start uniforming it up too much, it's a hot dog restaurant. Let's mm -hmm. not kid ourselves. So, but it's also a very good restaurant. So you want to, you want to be beachy because people walk in, it's the, it's the beach. And that's the lifestyle that you want to sell on the Outer Banks. That's why real estate agents down here sell the way they sell because mm -hmm. you're selling a lifestyle. Hunger. You're doing the same thing at Captain Frank's. You're selling something somebody yeah. wants. So yeah. Hey, no, I don't really want to talk about it except for just to mention. In my former life, I, oh, actually, I am a lawyer, but I but I but I don't I don't practice anymore. But I have a lot of people that friends of mine and acquaintances from everywhere from New York City to all that that are lawyers and and business people, and they just look at me and go. You made the best choice of any of us, you know. And like, you know, he said, "I dream about running a hot dog joint." I said, "Well, that sometimes that can be a nightmare, but, 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 but when I close the door at night, or when he closes the door at night, click, I don't have to worry about the judge calling me or anything else. It's you know, we can make our own decisions. One of the great things and pleasures in in working for yourself is you can make that executive decision without having to go through, um, you know, a whole board or this or that or the other and 
you know, if we want to put a new hot dog on the menu, and he's come up with some great ideas for new hot dogs, write it down. Um, you know, we write it down and we put it on the board, throw it out, let's see how it goes, you know, or, or trying something, you know, or, you know, a new one. A few years ago, um, I got to thinking that, you know, we've been in business for a long time, and we have great hot dogs, but I was thinking, you know what, I really want to make my own hot dog. And... So, uh, I was talking with uh, Uli Benowitz, who owns the Weeping Radish uh, Butchery and Brewery and everything. And I knew he had a German Metzgermeister, which is a master sausage maker over there. And I told him, you know what, I'd really like to work and see if I can make my own hot dog. And so I got together with... Um, Uli facilitated that. I got together with the uh, sausage maker and we made some little batches and till I got what I wanted. And um, so what we got was something not trying to compete with our skinless all beef, which is delicious and preservative free and all that sort of stuff. But I wanted one that was a little more a German sausage, mm -hmm. really, you know, with a skin, a pop to it. Right. And we call it our snap dog. This is, uh, this is our dog today that they make. Nice. Uh, for us and uh, it's our recipe and it's gluten free it's preservative free um, no nitrates uh, it, the ingredients are pretty simple the ingredients are um, beef pork sea salt celery juice and spices that's nice. it and they're smoked and cooked over there for him and we sell these in the restaurant not only on the menu but also for people to take for their 4th of July right. I'm not Pocket them. I'm just telling you, it's a yeah. Well, yeah, that's awesome. It, it's a it's a it's a it's really good. So it's a little different, but um, you know, it's, it's we wanted to do that, and it and it took off. It, uh, people now come in, and that's all they were. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what they want, and they like it. It's you know. So we're always looking for some way to make us a little more unique, a little better. As Captain Frank, and thankfully he's becoming Captain Frank more and more. But as Captain Frank, it's kind of like being Ronald McDonald. I mean, you know, it's the Ronald McDonald of hot dogs. It's like, a lot of people don't know my name is Harvey. They've just called me Frank. I, know, I had know, to ask that the yeah. other day. I was like, so are you Frank? Uh, like, people, yeah, that's what people want to know the origination of the name. Right. Is the, the, and obviously it makes sense when you say Yeah, you captain for the beach mm -hmm. and Frank for Frankfurters. Right. And, and then you, you can kind of think they can go from there. But, I mean, it would make sense if it was Captain Frank's. You know, right. people are always buying shirts because they have an uncle or dad or granddad <laughs> right. Frank. Right. And, you know, yeah, that's a good of, idea. Get a kick out of that. Uh, some years ago, um, we, you know, we decided to expand our menu at night a little bit. So um, we we now have and have had for years um, steamed shrimp, and we um, we really you know at night from four to nine at night we do our steamed shrimp every night except Sunday, but in in season we only do it uh, at night in season. But uh, it's become very very popular, and and we really. We really put out a good product. We're willing to pay for a good product, and we put out a good product. Uh, and we, uh, most people use, and this is, I mean, everybody's got a different way of doing it. They use convection steamers to do their shrimp. Um, we boil our shrimp just like they do down in, you know, South Florida, down mm -hmm. in the Keys and down in the Caribbean it's and stuff like that. Um, you'd be surprised the amount of shrimp that we pump out with this little pot <laughs> that's back there. You know, when I got an order for five pounds and I can maybe cook three pounds at one time and, you know, get to bring the water back. So it's definitely, but it's good. And I'd rather cook it that way and right. people enjoy it than press a button and just dry yeah. it, you know. Yeah. like So it's, it's something unique. We don't do it. Now we only do it a few months out of the year because right. I'd probably pull my hair out. I'd probably look like that if we had nights year round. I, I have a utmost respect for the restaurants and can stay up in yeah. breakfast, lunch, and dinner year round. We're in a very fortunate situation that we're able to be seasonal with nights and do just our lunches and stuff like that. But I think that's what keeps us fresh. Mm -hmm. If I tried to, if, if I, I would wear myself out if I mm -hmm. tried to go a different route in there or try to get into the bar business or anything like that with it. The, that's what kind of keep makes Cat Franks another very unique thing is our hours. But you can't have beer there. You can't you have, have, we, have we, we got beer, beer and wine now. Like yeah, a, come yeah, beer and wine. It's, so. Yeah, and we definitely have that. that we expanded our beer menu extensively this year with going into more craft beers and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and then. 
we added wine this season as well, mm -hmm. just a couple of house nice. wines. That's so good. it's been it's been it's been cool, and um, you know we've enjoyed doing that. That was a that was a big step for us. I I, I agonized over whether to put beer in the restaurant right. or not because we, you know, um, I think it was probably about eighty four. 85 that I made the decision to do beer but we didn't do draft beer and we still don't um, I didn't want it to be a place where people just came down and sat at the counter mm -hmm. and drank beer um, it, it's a family restaurant it is I mean it's it's when you walk in it's like a it's like walking into a cartoon all because of the it colors is. and the the, yeah. the hot dog that's there yeah. and the stuff going you know and everything and people yelling and you know and and bumping one another and you know it's crazy you know calling numbers out and and uh, you know and a lot of times it'll get so nuts in there that I'll just and Harvey doesn't do this but I will I'll just I'll just yell out again all right everybody hold it you know, really loud, you know, and everybody just stops. Like, what's going on? I said, all right, you're on vacation, smile. And then everybody just kind of, it just kind of yeah. breaks the tension, you know, or whatever. And I got a sign I put out that said, leave all grumps outside, mm -hmm. you, know? <laughs> you know. And uh, so, you know, it, it, we try to make it fun because it's so intense. Sometimes it we is. have a line out the door mm -hmm. for two, three hours at a time, you know, and, and, it's just our kids work so hard. I mean, it's just, you know, at that. And then, you know, and then all of a sudden it could be empty and you just go, wow. Yeah. And then within five minutes, it can be full oh, wow. again. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's something. But, uh, yeah. And even when the line, because usually line. now I've started, like, if we're kind of in a rush, like, I'll call it in and I hear, all right, 10 minutes. Yeah. And then I show up 10 minutes later and you're bagging it up and it's just, Yep. It's crazy, but I have, you know, come when there's been a line out the door. And it's not even that no. long. I mean, it's not like where you have to have the, the buzzer, you know. And no, people, people, locals will wait in line because our line moves. I it mean, does. It, just, it, it, it moves, and you get your food. That, you know, other people, when they see a line, they, they're thinking about other restaurants, mm -hmm. and they're going, ah, yeah. oh, this is going to be too. Right. <laughs> this little story guy, guy came, came for dinner. It was like in July, a couple of years ago. He's got a load of kids and everything. He said, well, how long before we can get a table? And he said, about 15 minutes. Oh, I can't wait for that. He drove off. He came back an hour and 15 minutes <laughs> later and said, well, how long to get a table? He said, 15 minutes. <laughs> He'd gone off, and everybody else was telling him an hour, two hours, hour and a half, hour 45 minutes. You know? Well, and a lot of people are local people who are just getting lunch. They've mm -hmm. got 30 minutes to yeah. get lunch. And so, but, they, but you see them waiting in line. Mm -hmm. And they do it because they know that we can get, we can move them really quickly through there, you know. If I, and the way I operate the ticket line as well is I look at it and I can look and see I got an order with 15 dogs on it here. I got an order with one hot dog and a drink. So I'm going to expedite uh -huh. around yeah. and get those smaller orders out to those people that I see. And I mean, once I get to know you two, I want to know what you, a lot of these people right. are eating too. I know that when Dan Hardy from Joe Lamb Realty comes in, he's getting a hot dog with mustard and chili. Like, yes. I know that's going to happen. You know, and I, I just know that I just know certain people's, yeah. you know, stuff. And I use Dan's example because he's in all the time, but I have hundreds of other people that like that. So, nice. Yeah. Nice. So I, that's, that's kind of how we do it around. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And I know, I hate to, because we've been talking about hot dogs, but we love your cheesesteaks. <laughs> They're the best we've found anywhere, and that's what we get. Every time, both Matt and I, and our son, he gets, he always gets two hot dogs with just, well, when he was little, it was just no bun, and now he's graduated, now he has a bun. Well, you're, well, you're well represented with the hot dogs yes. and the cheese steaks and all that, too. We're glad you enjoy the cheese yeah. steaks, we appreciate that. So. Yeah, and I remember you mentioned that you've had, you went to school in Philly, right? Yeah, I went to school in Philadelphia. Yeah, well, so those right are outside like of Philly. I went to genuine. West, went to Westchester University and right out in Westchester is where they slice the thin sliced ribeyes out there for the cheesesteaks in Philly, which is, you know, world famous uh, for cheesesteaks. And uh, um, I just I never had one until I got to college up there, you know, and went to this little grill and had this cheesesteak and I'm like, this thing is just awesome, you know, and and uh, you know Nothing against them, I mean, but what we use are the real sliced ribeyes. We don't use the steakums, mm -hmm. you know, those kinds mm -hmm. of things like that um, when we do it. And, you know, we want we want every sandwich that goes out to really not only taste good, but to look good. It does. And people, people eat with their eyes. And that's why 
when you look in our restaurant, you see the colors and, 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 and the colors that are on the hot dogs and the way, you know, we just don't slop stuff on there. We put it on in a way um, that it's appealing and eye appealing as well because, you know, I, I love to see pretty food myself. Why do you think the, the big burger joints and all, you know, use their national advertising to show you this yeah. gorgeous burger? Of course, when you get it, sometimes it's like that, but, you know, but, but, and people eat with their eyes and, and, and the smells, people come in, and this is true for me. People go, I've tried, I've bought your hot dogs, I've taken them home, I've grilled them, I've done them every way. It's just not the same. They bought my chili, they buy the stuff, they take it home and make it. And I have to tell you, it's true for me too. Yeah. I, I, it doesn't taste the same when I do it somewhere mm -hmm. else. There's something about the smell of the restaurant, the patina of the grill, the whole nine yards that makes it what it is. It's kind of like having popcorn at the movies, you know. I mean, popcorn always tastes better at the movies. Why it is does. that? Or, or, a, or, a, or a, you know, a ballpark Frank at a baseball game mm -hmm. or something, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, we want that experience, and that's part of the experience, you know. It goes out there, let people know that. So, yeah. Yeah, well, you guys, and that's how we felt when we first had your cheesesteak. We were just like, wow, this is so awesome. Yeah, I don't even think that we've ever even thought about getting anything different ever since then. Oh, that's good. So, yeah, you guys are definitely just the model for success, and I love your philosophy, and, um, you know, as a family business ourselves, we're kind of like, I think, more where you were at, just yeah. still climbing, you know, trying to to get to where, you know, we're doing okay, but you have to be there all the time. Um, a lot of people we talk to, you know, we've had on the show, you go in there, you're going to see them, you know, like we're going to see probably one of you every time mm -hmm. that you go in there and really you have to do that to be successful around here. And cause that's like your baby and you've, you know, you definitely want things a certain way and you're, and it's true, like ever, we've never had any problems. I know nobody's perfect. No, we we, <laughs> but, we, make, mis we make mistakes yeah. every day, but we try not to make the same ones every day. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, every time we see it, you know, it's the same, uh, same exact. We know what we're getting, and we love that. So yeah, you know what to expect. Yeah, you know. Thank you. And we and then that's something we strive for. So to hear it from people, to hear it from our customers, when our customer goes, you know what, this hot dog, I was haven't been here for five years, and this hot dog is the just as good now or you know than it was five years ago yeah. and taste just he said i remember the taste when i eat it or whatever same person who cooked it probably probably yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Could, could well be could yeah. well be um yeah it's it's uh it's it's something and it, we're one of the only restaurants that we're not stuffed in a kitchen somewhere mm -hmm. i mean we have to yep. cook right exactly in front of everybody so when i'm cooking on the grill or doing the bun steam or frying I'm also talking yes. to the people behind me, so mm -hmm. I have to be able to communicate with customers, my other employees, the entire time. So that's what it's a good part of the job because people get to see you take their yeah. food. People like that, though. I mean, people like to see their food get yeah. cooked. But I mean, it's a lot of pressure when people. Yes. There's not a lot of it's shortcuts I can take yeah. when I got ten people staring at me, and I'm trying. I, there's shortcuts I can take, mm -hmm. but I go, I better not because that that might be that right. person's you know food that I'm making right there. So. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, so that's kind of another aspect of it that, you know, that, that we are. Uh, and it, that it keeps us on our have. toes. Yeah. It keeps yeah. us on our toes to, to do all our cooking and all our prep in front of our customers. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, let's it's, think it's important for young people in the Outer Banks to know their history. Exactly. If you don't know where you came from, then you don't know where you're going. Yeah. So, basically, if I tried to change Captain Franks from what it originally was in 1975 and tried to turn it into something else, it wouldn't work. Right. It wouldn't. I mean, you won, like we've always said during the course of the interview, we evolve, but, but keep things the same. You want to keep certain things need to stay the same. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, because that's why people come to the Outer Banks. If people see way too many drastic changes in their life, sometimes you have to have a constant. Right. And I feel like Captain Franks is one of those places that is a constant and will continue to be a constant as long as I'm around. Awesome, awesome. Well, you must be, I could just see you over there smiling, like, so proud. Proud dad, you bet. And yeah, that's and awesome that you're, you love it too. And yeah, it's, he does, he's, he's got a, he's got a, he's got a passion for it. He's very good at it. Um, but just like me, he's still learning something every day. The one thing, one of the things I'd like people to, to consciously remember that live down here is that everybody here, either directly or indirectly, um, 
benefits from our tourism. And uh, our tourists are very important. We wouldn't have what we have without them. Um, and, you know, it's when I see people that are like, you know, I'm kind of, I'm a local, you know, and that kind of stuff, it's like, you know what, you wouldn't have the, uh, the people that retire down here, some of them, you wouldn't have the pharmacies, you wouldn't have the nice grocery stores, you wouldn't have the doctor's offices, you wouldn't have the hospital if it weren't for our tourists. Because our visitors are what help keep our property taxes down and, uh, and provide those other things for us. You wouldn't have a 10 screen movie theater in the wintertime if it weren't for our guys in the summertime. So I'd like to, I'd just like to tell people, appreciate those tourists down here. Are there rude people out there? Sure, but there are rude people, local people too. So you know, right. just you, you just you, you just give give into that and understand that you know, you've got to turn right on the bypass in the summertime. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> just yeah. turn right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. We forget about trying to take a left that's out right. of here. We just go to the traffic light now. That's right. Sure that's right. That's right. You first got here, so when we got when we first got here, there were no stoplights, none. The whole beach, all the way down. But and it was just the bypass. Yeah, it was just and the, the beach road. It was just, or just both. Both. the beach, beach road and the bypass. But it, but but the bypass was just two lanes, mm -hmm. like sand blowing across it all the time. Right. You know, so we, you know, out there. But uh, it's been fun. It's been a tr it's been a trip, and it's it's a continual trip. And um, Harvey, maybe he'll take it to a whole new level. Everybody should have a passion in life. And, Passion. My passion is hot dogs. So there you go. You know. You know. And we've been. We were in Southern Living last year. We've been on the Travel Channel. Um, you know, that CBS affiliate in Raleigh did the show on us. Uh, and it's neat to see that kind of recognition come in. Well, thank you guys so much. I loved hearing your story, and no wonder you're, you've been around for forty years. <laughs> and I hope you have another forty or eighty more after that. I hope it just keeps passing on through. You better. Uh, Maybe start having a family. Well, <laughs> well, thank, you. Your view. <laughs> thank you very much. We appreciate y'all taking the time to yeah. do this with us. This is very nice. We appreciate mm -hmm. it. Thanks for, thanks for what you guys are doing here. This helps, this helps everybody on the Outer Banks have things like nice. this. So thank nice. you. Um, well, thank you guys. Thank you, guys. you guys. Thanks, for, it. thanks for having us, and we appreciate it. And hope everybody has a great summer out there, tourists, visitors, and fellow business people. Awesome. Thanks again, guys, and check out Captain Frank's. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm Sue Arts with OVXEntertainment.com and OVXETV, and we'll see you next time.